Hey, everybody, it's John Swantek here from uh, PGA Tour Live. It is Valero Texas Open Week, but because of the postponement of a handful of events on the tour schedule, there's no live golf this week, obviously, at TPC San Antonio. So we will just revisit and relive the exciting and dramatic conclusion to the 2017 edition of the Valero Texas Open with the champion that season. Kevin Chappell joins us from his garage in Scottsdale, Arizona. Kevin, thanks for some time. How are you and the gang doing out there? Yeah, we're doing well. Thanks for uh, having me on. And uh, we found a quiet place in the garage, so uh, this is where we'll be. It's going to work. Obviously, winning on the PGA Tour is uh, the crowning achievement of a player's career. It's what you guys strive for. Um, how often do you think of that winning Sunday in San Antonio, and how proud are you of the effort that you put forth to finally push through that week? Yeah, you know, there was a lot of close calls there in 2016, and, uh, you know, it's nice to uh, – to know you got it done. Um, the Valero Texas Open has always been special to me. It was one of my first professional starts. Um, and then I had had some success in close calls there previously uh, before winning. So, um, you know, it's always been a special spot to me and uh, obviously will we'll be uh, for the rest of my career. All right, let's roll it. Let's get into it uh, deep on a Sunday. We'll pick it up at uh, the 15th. What's it like late on a PJ Tour Sunday, Kevin, when you're leading the tournament as you were by a shot at this point, rather than yeah. chasing, trying to run somebody yeah. down? Beauty. Yeah, you know, it's it's nice to be um, the one being hunted. You know, that's that's what you want on the back nine on a Sunday. And, uh, you know, I was in a great position here playing the 15th hole, uh, one of the harder holes on the back nine. And it's good to have that go-to cut shot, which puts you right in the middle of the fairway. You drove it really well on that Sunday, didn't you? Yeah, I drove it well. I didn't hit that go-to cut shot here very well, though. Um, you're kind of pulling it there in the left bunker. It seems like there's about 200 bunkers at TP San Antonio. They are everywhere, and they weren't really your best friend on the week. You were just two for seven in sand saves, and this was a tough one under the pump here late on a Sunday. Yeah, you know, I kind of uh, didn't hit that one very committed, and, uh, you know, it showed leave myself 15 feet for par. Um, you know, not what you want coming down the stretch. Two for seven in sand saves. What's it like standing over a putt of this importance late in a final round when you're trying to win for the first time? How were your nerves that day? You know, so at that point in the golf tournament, I'm leading. I got a putt to stay in the lead. But everyone was so far ahead of me um, that could catch me. I kind of knew what scores they could post. And so I was I was very calm about it. it was, at this point, it was like, all right, I got three holes left. I'm the only one that can really get to 12 under par. Second in the field and strokes gained approaching the green that week. Your iron play was superb. And that one at 16 was all over it and uh, set you up for a birdie opportunity here at the par three. Yeah, I remember hitting that shot and being real proud of it. Thought it might have actually been closer than it was, you know, 15 feet here. Um, hit a decent decent putt probably lacked a little pace and that's why i didn't go in so 17 uh kepka had just polished off a 65 he was in at 11 under and you kind of took on the short part four this was all you got as you said to joe there yeah i mean that's as good as i could hit it and uh, it was obviously a little right i get a fortunate bounce here but the ball ends up in a really awkward spot here um because of that slope i couldn't really chip it because uh, it's so fast and running away and, uh, you know, my attitude playing the last three holes was let's get three looks. Odds are I'll, I'll make one. And so that's why you see the conservative play here. Hey, let's putt it over the ridge, give ourselves, you know, 15 feet, 12, 15 feet, and see if we can uh, increase our odds of making a birdie in the last three holes. That would have been a really awkward pitch shot from there, right? Yeah, one you probably hit when you're playing with your buddies for fun, but on the 71st hole of a golf tournament, it takes a lot of, uh, a, a lot of courage to hit that one. Did you know where you stood here at 1100? Did you know Kepka was in at 11 at this point? Yeah, I think Brooks made birdie when I was on this tee box. But so again, I knew I was the only one that could get to seven or to get to 12 under par. And so it was just about giving myself looks and uh, trying to increase uh, the odds of making a birdie. And that little short one uh, coming up, just about three and a half feet, I want to say, and you had to you had to wait a little bit and think about it. Not easy with everything on the line here. I'll be honest, it's not one I remember. I don't remember having to make a four-footer for uh, par on number 17 there, but uh, obviously I, I knocked it in the middle and uh, get to go to the par 5 18th with uh, a chance to make birdie to win the golf tournament. 
you were in the zone. You have no recollection of it. Kepka was just kind of chilling there, waiting for a potential playoff. Yes. 10 out of 14 fairways on the day. You were eight under on the par fives. So that was second best in the field. That had to be a comforting feeling when you stepped to the tee here at the par five 18th. Yeah, and that day, I believe it was playing a little into the wind. Um, so that hole wasn't going to be reachable for me. And so that tee shot becomes a lot easier when you're not trying to hit, hit, smash it down the right side to give yourself the shortest distance in. And so it was kind of a fairway finder up the left. Um, hit a good layup here. This is one that gets your attention. Um, you know, you got to miss the bunkers and miss the hazard um, and, and still try and hit your number. And uh, we did a good job of that. So no thought of taking that one on. It was a layup all the way. Yeah, I lay up all the way. I didn't have that horsepower to get to the green from there. All right, so 88 yards. Far enough back here to spin this one a little bit, toss it behind the flag? Yeah, it's almost a full 60-degree wedge for me. And uh, obviously, I'm a little juiced up, so the uh, ball flew a little further. But uh, you know, I hit it solid, so the ball was able to spin and, and give myself a good look. All right, just take us through these, these final moments, Kevin, leading up to the uh, this putt here, which really had to be the biggest one of your career as you stared it down here. Yeah, uh, Brennan Grace and John Hunt were in my group, and one of them had a similar putt um, from maybe just below me. And then and Charlie Hoffman had made this putt lat the year before, so he kind of knew what it did, and it was just about hitting the best putt you could. And about halfway there, I, I thought it was in, and uh, it was. I mean, that was one of the greatest reactions of that entire PGA Tour season years of practice and sacrifice and physical and emotional toll on your body and all just kind of came bursting forth there didn't it yeah it's nice to be able to share it with a good friend joe uh is a good friend of mine and and he got to see the close calls in 16 and uh so you know a lot of emotion um that comes from the hard work and, and the people that helped me get to that point those close calls in 2016 resulted in four runner-up finishes. What did you learn during those moments where you fell just short that helped you on this particular Sunday, I think? Um, you know, I think it just validated that I could do it. And, uh, you know, I just needed to uh, to keep putting myself in that position. I felt like in 16, I didn't get it done for a multiple different reasons. Not none of, I, didn't, I never repeated history. It was always a different scenario. And so I knew that if I could just keep putting myself in that situation, eventually that one important putt would fall. And a little victory lap here for Wyatt. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that is cool. And you talk about the sacrifices that a player's family and support network have made to help get you to the top level of the game. It must have made that moment even more special to share in that triumph with your family. Yeah, to have the family there, you know, that, that week's a, uh, a special week, being, stay, being able to stay on site. The hotel's unbelievable with the amenities and uh, the things to do for the family. So that's one the family always gets to go to. So, you know, fortunate to get my first win and have the family there and, uh, you know, get to see them enjoy it with me. Of course, this season began at the Greenbrier Resort last fall. You shot 59 in the second round. It was your first start in, what, 10 months after back surgery, right? That was an incredible day there at the Greenbrier. Yeah, that was uh, also a fun day and, and one I got to share with the family as well. Um, and, uh, you know, it was a good way to kick off the season. And hopefully we can uh, get back to playing golf here soon and, and try and find some of that mom that momentum. Hopefully as well. We look uh, forward to having you back out there competing, Kevin, sooner rather than later. Uh, this was fun. Thanks for reliving uh, San Antonio and the victorious moment with us. And thanks for hanging today. Thanks for having me. You guys be safe.